Right, now we're going to look at the hyperbola on the complex plane. And so a definition here is on the complex plane, the hyperbola is a locus of a point Z which moves so that the absolute value of the difference between its distances from two fixed points, Z1 and Z2, is a constant K. Z1 and Z2 are the foci. So here on my diagram I've drawn uh, two fixed points Z1 and Z2. We know they're going to end up being the foci of my hyperbola. Now um, uh, Z is going to be some point I'm going to draw out here. Here's some movable point Z here. According to our definition what we're saying is that this distance, Z minus Z1, and this distance, Z minus Z2, and this might initially look like a, an ellipse, but the, the, the um, definition here says that the um, Z minus Z1, the difference between its distances from two fixed points, so the difference is subtract Z minus Z1, take away Z minus Z2, must be equal to a constant. Now it said the absolute value is a constant. So we could say either plus or minus K there. Otherwise we could have written the absolute value sign, um, but we're going to put the plus and minus K because that's going to help us a little bit later. So just recapping, what we're saying is that this distance <coughs> minus this distance is always equal to a constant. Now obviously it depends, the way I've drawn it here, this distance is bigger than this distance. So that would give me a positive K. But if I drew my Z value over here somewhere so it was closer to this point, then that distance minus that distance would actually be a negative value, so that's how we would get the negative k. Alright, now for a um, hyperbola, k, this value here, is actually the length of the transverse axis. So what we might do is turn to a specific example and we'll learn a little bit more about how to, to do these. So the example we're going to look at is this sketch, uh, and I'll write it in standard form already, Z minus 1 plus I, take away, so this distance, take away Z minus 5 plus I, and I'm using a um, similar values as to the ellipse that we last did, equals negative 3. Okay. Notice I haven't got plus or minus 3, I've just got, I've just got the negative value. That's going to be important uh, when we get a little bit further down the track. So first of all we recognize this is not a circle, it's not a straight line, it's not an ellipse. An ellipse would be like this but it would be plus. Okay, so we recognize that this is in fact a hyperbola. It's a hyperbola. It has foci at um, Z1 equals 1 plus I, Z2 equals 5 plus I. It has a transverse axis equal to 3 units. Notice 3 units, not negative 3, you can't have an axis negative 3 units long but it has a transverse axis of three units. I'll show you where we handle that negative in just a moment. So when we come to sketch this, um, like we did before, uh, okay, so imaginary, real, one, two, three, four, five. 
Uh, and so we've got a focus at 1 plus i and a focus at 5 plus i. So once again we find the centre of our hyperbola. Uh, the centre of the hyperbola is always halfway between the two foci. So once again the, we could do it like we did the, the um, ellipse and average the two foci. Otherwise we can do it by inspection and see that the centre is going to be there at 3 plus i. Now the transverse axis is 3 units long. So 3 units long is going to be um, 1 and a half units either side of the centre. So 1 and a half units this way would take us to there and 1 and a half units this way would take us to there. You can see the importance of a fairly neat diagram. So I will label those points in just a moment. So if this is my transverse axis and it is three units long altogether. Um, I've now got my folk, my vertices for my hyperbola. So I know that my hyperbola is either going to be. I'm just going to draw a rough sketch down here because I need some other explanation. Okay, I know that I've got my two foci got my centre, got my vertices, I know my hyperbola is going to go like that and like that. And remember with the complex form we're not drawing in the asymptotes, we're not worrying about that, uh, we're just drawing in the branches of the hyperbola. Now remember, um, because why I'm pausing here is we're actually not going to draw both branches and the reason why is this. Remember that Z can be a point anywhere on, on your curve. So Z could be either over here or it could be over on this branch. This is uh, Z2, this is Z1, the foci. Now if you have a look at this, Z minus Z minus this point. This distance, take away this distance, the 5 plus i, could this distance take away this distance possibly be equal to a negative number? This is bigger minus a smaller distance can't possibly give us a negative number. So this point Z here doesn't seem to satisfy this equation. Let's consider the other point over on this branch. Let's consider this point. I've got this distance here. I'll make it bolder. And I've got that distance there. So Z minus Z1, this one, is now the shorter distance. Could this distance minus this bigger distance, you've got small distance minus big, you've got small distance minus big distance, could that possibly equal negative 3? Yes, because so you've got small minus big is going to be a negative number. And so Z, the immovable point Z, could possibly be out this way. It can't be here because otherwise that couldn't be a negative number. If this was a positive, then this would satisfy. If this was plus or minus, then both of them would satisfy. But in this case, on our, on our diagram here, we're only going to draw the um, hyperbola, this branch of the hyperbola. Remember, don't draw it like a parabola. The, the sides are asymptotic so they don't curl back in on themselves. And that's all we draw for that particular um, hyperbola. I'll just try and give you another um, explanation as to which um, branch of the hyperbola we draw. Looking at the equation, 
First of all, you notice this is a negative number. So you know that this must be um, small minus big. Okay, and you've got to find, you've got to draw your hyperbola where this is true. Okay, so we need to draw our hyperbola so that the distance from my hyperbola to this point, the 1 plus i, is actually smaller than its distance from 5 plus i. So if here's 5 plus i, this is this focus, and here's the other focus, I've got to draw it closest to this foci. In other words, I draw it in here, closest to this foci. It's always going to be closer to this foci than it is to this one. Okay? If, um, if this was a positive number, then it would be big minus small, so I would draw it closest to uh, this foci. You draw it where it's going to, um, if you imagine a point Z on there, um, does it satisfy this uh, distance equation. And that's how we sketch hyperbola.